2022 Woodland Stud and down by the seaside, Victorian Derby winner, Leap to Fame, Grant Dixon joins me. Firstly, welcome to Campbell's comments and congratulations, mate. Uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. It was a um, very, very dominant win tonight. Um, last week, maybe a couple of runs short with the travelling arrangements and things not quite going to plan. Oh, look, just with the... Um, it was, we hadn't raced for four weeks and obviously the the trip down on him is his first time that he'd flown. Um, and, you know, we just had to, um, you know, first time on the track, just get his bearings a bit and, and um, yeah, just he, we had a good week with him this week. So, obviously, you know, the way the race panned out, we had to draw and, you know, probably had to run at a bit stronger tempo to try and beat Captain Ravishing. Um, person who trains horses and drives horses and watch, you were, you, you were keen to win last week but you were sort of kind on him as well, like you weren't up him for the rent, if you, if you like, like you were you were conscious that you had another week, you know, and a really tough race ahead of you? Oh, look, at the end of the day, that they, they run a super half, and, you know, like he possibly couldn't have gone any actual faster. Obviously, you know, he could have went probably stronger last week, but, you know, you're not to know how you had to go about beating the other horse. And you know, like really realistic tonight, you know that was you know our, we had the opportunity to roll a bit stronger and see whether we could outstay him. Adam Hamilton made the call. Oh, we're back at the Queensland Carnival. That he's seen the you know the best three-year-old for the year, and we got horses down in like catch, uh, catch a wave, and there was a couple of others. Captain Ravishing wasn't even on the scene at that stage, and I was like, yeah, I got to see him at Tamworth of all places where he paced 54 and change, sitting in a death. He's a bit of a complete horse, isn't he? Because he can take these big tracks, like Tamworth's a little, you know, saucer. I don't think anyone, you know, disagree with it. He's sort of got a, a lot of strings to his bow, anyway. Yeah, I think that's his biggest asset: the fact that he can, um, you know, adapt to situations and and still, you know, come out pretty, pretty good on the other side of it. Does he have a chink in his armour? Is there is there a weakness to him? No, probably only me at times. <laughs> I, I I don't believe, but like I mean, he's a beautiful horse. At, at Tamworth, he was a little bit rowdy before the race. He, you know, he was telling people he was there, but he's entitled to. Or he was the best horse um, on the track and that. But once he got out on that track, he was just all, all race horse. And I, I think you learn a lot more from horses going around those tight tracks. I don't know what you think than you do on these big spacious tracks like Albion Park and, and here. But he just at, at Tamworth, the one thing myself and Cam Bray said halfway up the straight, you said come on and lifted the rein, and he just accelerates. And he beat a nice horse that day too. Yeah, he did. Teddy Disco is a horse on the way up, and you know around the middle of the track, so I knew he'd take a lot of a lot of catching. And you know, we, we you know we went super fast around that track, that's for sure. You've had a lot of good horses. You've been associated with a lot of good horses, um, and you've raced a lot of good horses. How did, how does he me- measure up? I mean, people are going to say like I know obviously he's a serious horse, but like is he a serious Grand Circuit horse next year? Oh, look, we hope that he will be. You know, it'd be interesting to think that he's, you know, possibly the best one we've had. But at the end of the day, you know, Colt 31 did last for, a, you know, a long time for us, and his longevity probably kept him in good stead. But hopefully, we can keep this fella healthy and sound. Like, you know, he, you know, hopefully we can. You know, next year we might be in the Victoria Cup or something. What are you, What are your plans now? Is this it for him for the season? Oh, look, we've got to work it out. Me and Tristan put a, have a bit of a think about it. So he pulls up. He's, he's Breeders' Challenge, obviously, that he qualified in that heat. Yep. And then he's also Breeders' Crown. But we don't, you know, we just can't go on everything. And we just got to weigh out which ones we're going and which way we go. Is that, is that a little bit of the, I suppose, a, um, anomaly or the, the problems with this end of the season? It's so exciting for harness racing. It doesn't matter what state you go to. They're so exciting, all these big races. But at the same time, they're one after the other and it's hard to be able to target all these races. Yeah, there's a lot, lot on late in the season, and obviously this fellow was up early in the season for the New South Wales Derby, and um, probably with a few of them big four-year-old races on next year, you've got to try and keep them in mind as well. So, yeah, there's a bit of planning to do, and the main thing is to see how he pulls up first and go from there. You've got the whole family here too, mate, um, and it's getting expensive. They've got a lot of sideshows up there, and the kids are up there having a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah, they, Thomas just wanted to snip 50 off me. He's getting a bit carried away with that, but we'll, we'll see how we go. <laughs> it's always fun. It's what harness racing is. I mean, it's a family sport. It's a professional sport. Mate, I love what you do. I love the way you present your horses. I know you're not overly keen on the interviews and that, but um, I really appreciate you giving me five minutes, and uh, congratulations. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks.